Tell us when you started to fly. Well, we both started about the same year, yeah, 1947. Roger, Roger started a little bit before me. Uh, very little. <laughs> 47, I started. Yeah. Down in Decorah, Iowa. I got my license in 47. Yeah. And I got my license in 48 on skis. On skis. Winter time. Here it come. We got the wind. I think that's the wind. <laughs> I joined the Flying Farmers in 48, I know. Hold the door shut. Hold it shut. Yeah. Make a good doorstop. What so else? What, what did you, you fly? Huh? What did you fly? Oh. What did you do your training in? Started out with Champ, Ronka Champ, and then I joined the club here in Decora. Learned several years, uh, several months. And they, they'd fly up to the farm and give us a, a lesson, and he'd fly back to Decora again. And after that, a couple of weeks of that, we joined the club in Spring Grove, and then we started a cub, a JSK cub. But Roger, you started in the champ down I here. started in the champ down in Decorah, and um, got my license in the champ with uh, Dewey Tatro and Chuck Rosendahl were my instructors. And uh, then I quit flying for a couple, three years because I couldn't afford it. And then I bought a Ronka Chief in 1954, and I flew that for quite a few years. And eventually went from there to uh, uh, 172 and one and a cardinal I had for quite a few years, 19 years in fact. In fact, I built my own airplane during that period of time from scratch in my basement. That was a Whitman Tailwind. I flew that for quite a few years. And, uh, and then moved down. Knocked, to, they knocked out of the door. The, the window yeah. and the wall of the basement to get the airplane out. Well, I built I was it in my basement. How you got it out. Yeah, I built it in the basement, but there was a big kind of window there, just about like this, and uh, in that much area, and I just removed that and tape and uh, took the airplane out mm -hmm. with the wings off, of course, put it back together again, and then because yeah. my runway was right there, so I just was able to fly it right there. So, how many guys flew? Down here well, in my book that I wrote, I think I got a list of near 100 pilots around right. here. And not everybody got their license, but uh, at least they solo didn't learn. But I got a list of, and that book is in the library down here, mm -hmm. and it's called Flaps Up. But uh, that was, uh, I listing of all the guys in the uh, military, flew in the military, and uh, all the early guys way back and started like James Shelley and let, the Mellon Tree started in 1928, and they were the, one of the first ones around here. And so how many, how many guys flew a lot? Or how many local people own their own aircraft? Well, uh, we're the only we two are flying now. Yeah. Well, uh, nobody else is flying it except us two. I think we've been about the only two that have really progressed through the years yeah. and still flying. How many hours? Oh, man. Three. Oh, ah, 3,000, something like something that. Something like about the same. Anyway, uh, uh, as you told about you started in the 150. Well, I had the, G, the J3, and then we got this new P11, and I'm still flying it now. That's a 47 model, mm -hmm. so that thing is 62 years old, still flying that. See? But then we had a Cessna 140, I took place, and when I was in their service in Rapid City, I flew back and forth to Air Base, and then we got a... So I was out flying for about 10 years. So after I got married, I didn't fly for about 10 years. But then we got a uh, four place, a, Cher a Cherokee four place. And uh, first, Roger's wife got to be international or flying farmer queen. And then the next year, my wife got to be queen. And that one Cherokee, we flew all over the United States to the conventions. You know. mm -hmm. And my son learned to fly in that Cherokee too when he was 17 years old. There was, yeah, he went to California when he was 17. And, uh, well, I know uh, 
uh, Roger was a flying farmer, I remember when I was, and we took a lot of activities. He had, up when he lived in Rochester, he had uh, f meetings of the flying farmers there in this farm strip. And I remember we had about 30 airplanes there, there was at one time. So, uh, I had my I had my own airport there on my farm for 25 years, and we used to do a lot of flying off of that. We had a lot of meetings there. One time I had to, my wife wanted to plant her sweet corn. We didn't have a seed. So we jumped in the airplane. We flew up to Rogers, landed on that strip. Nobody was home. We stole his pickup and drove down into Rogers, Rochester and bought seed, sweet corn seed. Came back to his place, left the car there, or pick up there, got in the airplane, flew home again, and planted a sweet corn. <laughs> and we told him about it later. We called later and told him we'd been there and taken his pickup. Oh, were there a lot of farm farmer airfields around? Oh, yeah. Because I know the old maps show lots of them within 10 uh, miles a year, actually. I suppose at 48 through 50, there was a lot of strips around here, farm strips. Yeah. A lot of them. I could name off many different strips that there. And the farmers, a lot of farmers were there. Back when we were in flying farmers, both of us there, like state of uh, Minnesota and Iowa, Kansas, boy, they had 500 members every state, you know. Now it's down to it's nothing, very little. Too many of them left. Very little. Now. Aviation has changed. It's, yeah. it's gotten it's a lot more big expensive. Bit. It's oh, more yeah. expensive. You need a transponder to yeah. Yeah. all, all kinds of two-way equipment, two-way radio uh, equipment. To, uh, let's see. It's yeah. taken the fun out of it. A lot of yeah. it has taken yeah. the fun out of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's been an interesting life, though. Well, when did it start to change? Uh, we know people who fly. I think just gradually yeah. over the years, yeah. there's more government last, involved. I think the last 10 years when the aviation gas went to high price, mm -hmm. that's one thing that slowed down that. Yeah. Well, you just start thinking of $5 a ga gallon, you know. And then all the regulations, too. That's what I hear. Regulations. Are, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, the uh, civil aviation is kind of good. Pushed yeah. aside. Yeah, yeah bit, right. But, yeah. I think one thing about it, both of us, uh, I'd say that we saw a lot, have seen a lot of country we wouldn't have seen if we wouldn't have been in the airplane because we traveled here and there to the meetings and to the conventions and that. And uh, well, coast to coast, you know, it's nothing uh, nowadays. And both the uh, Cherokee and his Cardinal, why they were cruised about 130, 120 miles an hour, you know, why. Covered country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you see many uh, building experimental aircraft has been a pretty big hobby for the last oh, yeah. Yeah. quarter century anyway. Mm -hmm. And you see a lot of that around here. Around? Well, that's what mine was. It was yeah. Basically experimental, but uh, I mean it was certified, mm -hmm. and uh, so I could fly it any yeah. place I want to. But I built it from scratch. I'd done all the welding myself, done all the woodwork, and. Mm -hmm. Spent five and a half years building it, but it flew for several years. First trip that we made was down to Rockford, Illinois, my wife and I, when we, after 22 days after I had it certified. <laughs> so, um, and with the cost of new planes, a lot of them are building their own, and yeah. and you just have the satisfaction of building your own. You know, mm -hmm. And that, that's, uh, uh, I can remember. Just for a fun time, we lived over here east of town, and and I needed a part for the something over at Harmony, and I jumped in the airplane. I flew to Harmony, landed in the edge of town. That was 40 years ago. Walked in town, got my parts, flew back home again. I could have driven just as quick, maybe, and totally, but it was more fun to fly. And remember a time we built your hangar out there, town. A bunch of the farmers got together and they helped build this hangar and this farm out in the town here. And I flew from the, our farm right across town to the edge of uh, west of the town here and landed in the district and helped build the hangar. So did you do your, all your own maintenance? and My, uh, Not uh, minor maintenance, yes, mm -hmm. you can do that. You're but the sleeping. certified stuff you can yeah, go to. That, yeah, that has to go through FAA. Decora or mm -hmm. right. something like that? Through a, 
certified mechanic. Runner, you got to get an A&E mechanic. <laughs>